A single gunshot at point-blank range took him out instantly. The smell of death quickly filled the air as his bleach-white garment turned crimson. Murder at an apostolic shrine was hardly the perfect New Year opener villagers at Negombwe expected. Yet, former police detective Jason Muvevi purposed it so. And the corpse that now lay before congregants was ample proof of his handiwork. This lifeless form belonged to Crispin Kanerusine, a Joani Masoe Wechishanu Apostolic Church leader. His murder and those of two others gripped a nation fresh from festive mirth. Why did Muvevi kill Crispin? Did he also have a particular reason to execute his second and third victims? Negombwe village is roughly 40 kilometers from Zimbabwe's Wedza district center. The area mainly comprises fertile soils. It brims with vegetation, all nourished by a glimmering sunny climate. Nearby is Mukamba Business Center. Here, shops provide a bit of everything for villagers, from groceries for families to the champion imbibers' favorite ale. Apostolic believers in Ruswa, Mapininga, and surrounding plains flock to their bearded shepherds at a shrine in Negombwe every Friday. But peace was broken on this particular Friday, Friday the 13th. Taka namata. Guva the Fumbam Chica Tilwam Teuru Kuneva can give any Minamatu Nitiwa and Munamatu Tichivata Sunungu, what she vata and Apamasoi, to Vatano could the same as why a do a Ekunamat Tanamat Mayamuche Newakazuya, which it too would as I do a good teacher, she would rather take a Tarisana Nashu. Porofita and Gator Mugwanza. Medium built and of average height, Jason Muvevi's demeanor is anything but fearsome. A former schoolmate recalls a sober and temperate being with a knack for accomplishing personal targets. Jason learned at St. John's Maninga Primary School and St. Matthias Ruskwa Secondary School. Jason Muna Kakura Kanyarara, a singer tower as in a violence in the moon. Kesa <laughs> After school, he joined the Zimbabwe Republic Police as a constable. His second posting in the service was at the Minerals and Border Control Unit, where he became a detective. Stationed in Kadoma, 140 kilometers west of the capital Harare, he mainly tracked illegal gold mining and trade. A component of his training involved weaponry. In 2013, he swapped his police badge for a gold mining permit and joined those he once policed. A former detective colleague says that switch accounts for Jason's opulent lifestyle. <laughs> Younger Munai Tongi, a canyara, I nakids walk any aya, as I read it's a good tea, Aruda quitters in which Mauko Sagati one day. Do Pakas Oti, the Gaindichi, CH Purisa, and the one to my mind it wang, twanting I take another bit of fields ecoco, do Kusia Quagaita. Sanny say I do Kanagas in the Sochiaz and the Surukangan Ukwam Tar. And I come to the Gogas of Jim Punduzai Tamari, Coco. Those which he tango go not to Zunizima, go to Zunichi, Zunimari, Zima Mines. In 2022, 
Jason had a run-in with the Zimbabwe Revenue Authority for importing two top-of-the-range vehicles illegally. The probe is continuing. He owns four houses in Kadoma, one in Gezi suburb and another in Destiny suburb. The remaining two are in Rimuka Township. He also rents two properties in Harare's Newlands upmarket suburb. In addition, he operates gold mines in battlefields near Kwekwe and along Empress Road close to Jombe. He was also making maneuvers in lithium mining. It is believed he secured a firearm based on his line of business. According to an associate, the former police officer has three wives. One lives in Rishawane, the second in Kadoma, and the third in Newlands. While not much is known about his first wife, he has two children with the second. His customary union with the third missus is yet to be blessed with offspring. Mukazwe chipiri kutora na kwa kai tana na Jason. Gati mu Jason na tina uzombo mu na mu mu komedo. Jason na tina kuzombo ziwa kuti teachers wa face yake. Every Sunday I to wea ku church ni muzi mai wake. Awa imborova even pama conferences ese waito zote vani ngevari po vai supporta. Aiwe mu na notauri kanae. January eleven. Jason returned to his home village having spent some time away. He was at his mother's homestead on Thursday night. Clouds gathered. The atmosphere was humid. Was Jason's homecoming a blessing from lands yonder or a curse from the depths of darkness? Daybreak held the answer in her belly. About 500 meters from the Muvevi homestead is an apostolic shrine. Here, one person of interest stood out. Crispin Kanerusine, a tall grey beard, he was respected by congregants. Kanyo Rovira, Munu haito taura kuti karai munu, karai sosu za haka fosa jaka ti karai munu nyararu. Musato mbofa mbosaite jojo ni wan. Kana nyanke mtumbu no wadzama. Crispin was raised in Zinzombe village in Weza. In his prime, he worked for the then Ministry of Roads Construction Department in Murewa. He became a trader, specializing in articles of clothing. This appeared enough for his modest lifestyle, his wife and three children, Alice, age 20, Provenage, age 15, and 10-year-old Silage. <laughs> And then like from Then and then and then the <laughs> Morning prayers at the shrine seemed purposeful, filled with heartfelt supplication. It was the kind of atmosphere apostolics believe ushers one into the so termed ninth heaven. Suddenly, a white vehicle pulled into the shrine at noon. This was far from the stealthy yet grand entrance of saints into holy ground. The two car occupants were barely angelic as the loud spurs of music from their radio pierced the surrounding serenity. 
Some congregants recognized the driver. It was Jason, a man they knew from his childhood. His mother was at the shrine alongside other believers. Pakashika mota yaito riza radio. Chiri kudivere madzima yata katokano kakutise baba hava pinda msanga no mota yichi riza dindindi. Sakani wana baba waviri manwe rotawa na baba chisora. Waka baba sumu kase mtemo edue kumasowe kuno gamuchira wanu wawo ya msanga. Chibata shika pa masowe. Ndakada umasara ndaka gara umutu kira nzaayo mdara buda titi wanete seya mai. Tupandaka buda. Tabuda ndia pa masowe kira nzaayo mdara bisa busu dao tuko zonu pupura wata anachi kwamu. Ndoku vanda sangana nao vachisika pa mabegi ewa rumi. Saka nda sangana nao inda kata kutumbo pinda kuinda kuhu. Masowe kuni wamu. Ndupa mwe yungu wara mba mba ndazo kama ndakwazi zana ni waruma. Ndakwazi zana ni waruma. Ndaka Vaka bisa butu Vaka bisa butu Ndo vaka Vati butu zedu Tuesa mwote Vati vaka Tuna vaka Ano Kana kuzisia Vaka indi vaka Tuna vaka Vaka asia nyipa Asia nyipa Vaka butu Vaka kwa zini inda Asima ura Vaka ita manja Achi gara Engo nye nama Masino Achi ngo nye nama Achi ngo nye nama Ini sana zinguo ndi nusu wanda kachia kuti chichi rukui tika pani mukomano, taka tuto siki tira ndi pama sui pap, umagato kuda koko. Like a tormented apparition, Jason was fidgety, his menacing eyes dancing. It was not long before he went back to his vehicle. Munu ya agara, akamba sumu kangu wadi, ati vazoke, ista kangu funga uti arunu zuri la wati ani, yaki, ati na kuzia uti pani cha akunu tora. Chingawe chika tipata mbuzi kutigere pa masoe. Vagara pa masoe. Ie aga gara. Kuma mine zima shuma shuma nunga. Asika kwa nunga na mashani. Agara pa masoe pa. Ndo vazimu kai vazo kakui. Kumote. The moment dea kazo sumu kwa ndo vazo kira kuenda kupi. Kuenda kumote kari kechipiri. Ndo fuwa ndo pa kawo ya anichi. Nika futikaki. The moment had come. The Grim Reaper walked right in the middle of the white-robed flock, clothed like one of their own. Only his heart knew the vile mission at hand. Each step took the devil's archer closer to aiming his arrow perfectly. Sechi shanu cha ndaka mbuta ura cha fura. Kutindaona mutiwe we muonde wa oma. Asuku oma kwe mutiwe muonde. Ndaona kufa kwe wapenyu. Mkatime nchumbu ini. Ndaona matwaga kuenda kwa mre mbinda, kwa masosa. Ndikaona masika, ne kwa mrewa. Ndikaona masika, ne dombo shava. Asurufu ndaru wona. Mkatime sangana. Crispin was deep in prophecy when the archangel of death confronted him. The prophet was kneeling. And as he conversed with the preternatural, Jason pressed a pistol above his brow. There was no escaping what was to come. Swiftly, mercilessly, purposely, Jason pulled the trigger. A sudden burst entered Crispin's brow. It exited through his temple. Blood gushed from the newly opened passage, forming a pool in the dust. The same dust from whence he came and was now returning. The deed was done. The respected shepherd let out his last breath as his flock scampered. Taka funga uti aruka kuno fugama, paka fugama baba vedu vemwe ya, ni msondo se aruku turikira. Tisinga zile kuti arukutwe nda kutono wabai. Sanga ntaka tozo ungonzo wa chincha kuti tu. Dova sanga zoresi la varafundu. Tatuna uta akabata futi. Tiri panguwa yu. Saka ni taka vata panika. Vanu vajinji. Saka ni amaive duwa mwa waka sara. Varipo na amaive muu rizi. We munga na uya kaita yuzune kuti mposto wa antona mata kumasubo. Vaka vavari za mere. Vaka ati wawure ire imuna asinaji. Asina mosha. 
tigere pangwa yu pasangan vanhu vatotiza vamwe sangana akabva anodzoka kwanga enda kumota achivhashika achibata ndidi kuona munhu akabva atanga kudzinganisa vanhu vanhu vakatanga kumhanya ne masango vanhu vesaka bata mhanya asi mai manje vakambo ofenda akabva enda kuna mai wake achibva pana mai wake akabva atanga kutendera tendera pane pane board ya baba achi chaga chaga ani yacho sive zitare chinhu chaichaga andise kuti akachinhongere kana kuti hana ndipo pana ndo pakanga paine gwanza ravo vachiita zvekubatsira vanhu vari pana mutumbi wao taka wana wapa saka iri vhira muri kuona kuti takatozoisa tichivharidzira ropa eh ta ivo tavabvisa Wizza police station is 40 kilometers away from Negombwe village. Officer in charge Inspector Maxwell Hove served in the force for 24 years. At 48 years old, he was highly regarded for his courage and experience which won him awards. He received an urgent telephone call from Negombwe on Friday the 13th. He was a hard work. He was a hard work of any nature. I think those are posts that are up in the Pakadai. Wasting no time, Inspector Hove marshaled six officers and headed straight to Negombwe. The dispatch team carried firearms and drove in a pickup truck. Inspector Hove sat up front with the driver. In the back was Detective Constable Tendaim Gora, a new addition who had joined with the police only 24 hours earlier. This was his first assignment probably the best orientation for any marksman. Their vehicle had just pulled up the final rise towards Negombwe when they spotted a particular figure in a white Toyota Allian vehicle, Jason Muvevi. Inspector Hove and his band of officers were on the cusp of capturing the homicide suspect. Their plan appears to have been to block Jason's vehicle, corner and then apprehend him. However, the engagement panned out as follows. The reaction team drove straight to the suspect's car, blocking off his immediate escape route. But a burst of fire targeted the police driver. The shot missed. Dupa yaka sumira iri kusaidi kwa inumva yati ichikoka futi chita umana rai pasi. Aumana wawe polisi wa chingo jambo wa chenda kusiri. Kwa ya angaka miro kwa ndupa haka tanga kuriza futi. Jason then went for Detective Constable Mugova, shooting him three times in the stomach and pelvis. Inspector Howe tried to exit the car and assume a vantage point. His experience came to bear as remaining in the vehicle would have spelled doom. Yet he was to survive only for a moment. Jason's pistol trailed him. There was no escape. The colossal hero of Weza police tumbled, shot in the head three times. Blood oozed onto the tarmac, marking the demise of one of Zimbabwe Republic police's revered figures. Justice Crispin before him, Inspector Hove's team scampered for cover as he hit the deck. Jason was not done. He moved the police vehicle and cleared his escape route. It was at that point that he noticed Detective Constable Mugova breathing. Attempting to finish him off, he shot at him again. His target survived only because the gunman thought he was dead. Medical examinations later showed that Detective Constable Mugova's intestines were damaged. He was admitted into the hospital intensive care unit with a bullet lodged in his body. Shupikai Madondo was at home that afternoon. She stepped out of the house to collect her baby's laundry from the washing line. Suddenly, a terrifying figure swung into view, his clothes soaked in blood. <laughs> Chikanzi ndabayu. Chikanzi mabayu wa, mabayu wa kupi, chikanzi kurodu. 
Ndipopee Constable Mugova sustained serious body injuries, uh, which included uh, on the abdomen. Uh, initially, he was in the ICU, and uh, now he has just come out of the ICU. And uh, one of the bullets is currently lodged in his body. Jason took two firearms from the scene, an FN rifle and a CZ pistol. The rifle had a magazine and 10 rounds of ammunition. He retained his own pistol, an FN Browning. After the roadside carnage, Jason's appetite for human blood seemed to surge. He returned to his first murder scene and shooed congregants away from Crispin's corpse. Hastily, he went to Mkamba Business Center roughly five minutes' drive from the shrine. He shot 27-year-old bartender Munashe Majani after calling him to his car. He then vanished. Munashi. I have not paid two minutes to Vavanzi, 
munashi aka faka da yau to ko wannan aka da yau Hedman Ngombwe was attending a meeting in Zimbabwe's capital Harare as Muvevi rampaged He received a call on his mobile phone The message from the caller was chilling Ndaka fonerwa hinini ndichinzi Akungati kuma 7 a.m. Zvichinzi indave kundave kuno kutave nemusangano kuno kuna minister Zvichinzi angari anga akatopaka pamba pe i achitokutsvaka saka asazopfura vanhu asi anga ifanwa kuti it a first victim ndimi it also turned out that chief ruzani was another of muvevi's targets he only survived the ex policeman's battle fortuitously pataka tanga kuti ndichisiva kuti ndiye munhu anonzi muvevi e ndakamunzwa na kanzela wangu anonzi kanzela makono we wadi 12 e akandifonera achiti mambo muri kumba here e pana anonzi muvevi aruda kuona ndika tinowo ine nandi sikumba ndika ndi muvevi upi zvikanzi muvevi umunhu iri menyu maruzano Ndivanda kuti a wo mvevu tezvarava namuzamindo achibva kuti ye ku background vato daira akati kuti e ndini ndaka kuti a e uri kuti zvanzi ndine development ya ndiri kuda kutaura nini ndikati no inini ndiri kuhwedza mzuku nekuti toita vasuku iyo yekwana mvivi ndikati no ndiri kuhwedza mzuku zvanza a e ndoshika kumanje manje ndatwo undi gire koko kora mzukuru ndichitotaura pa phone saka panda kapedza kutaura nai ndofunga ndina kuita 10 minutes e mwana wangu mkomana lingona achibva ndi phone era akati baba kuno uko kune munhu anonzi mvevi atoura yavanhu vairi ndikati ndatobva kutaura onai manje manje achitano down down zvikanzi bvai matodzima ma phone ingo ndikati ah ko anga chiura iri vanhu zvikanzi a ndo zvatatu kutaurira ini ni the moment yandaka dzima phone ndichimhanyira pa police pa wedza nekuti ndandiri muno mwedza ndichimhanyira pa police pa wedza ndo banda katosvika pa wedza paine umwe mpurisa anga sacha goni kutaura zvinonzi pane vamwe achingoti ha chef vapfu ha chef vapfu kudaro officer in charge hove nyamba officer in charge uya anga tofa iye kuti achitaurira vanhu kuti afu kuti pakatopfuru uyaito yakwandira kuti rewo kuti pamwe ida kuti ndura yefuti kuti kumba kwangu ai anotonzi akatembeka asvika akandishaya ndo pakachizenda pamashops pagonesa news of the cold blooded murder spread rapidly late friday afternoon citizens were both shocked and rattled so appalling with the killings that the report was transmitted to the presidency speedily at police general headquarters senior officers knitted a strategy to net the fugitive details searched vehicles at roadblocks along the arare mutare highway wedza road and other routes surveillance squads kept their eyes peeled their gaze on the lookout for the now familiar figure a code was also put out to mosambique South Africa, Botswana, Malawi and Zambia. Normally when uh, we have cases of interest, cases where we believe the suspects could also skip the country or have already skipped the country, we in terms of the Interpol system, we have to alert our neighbors. January 14. The trail seemed cold. There was no trace of Jason. Could he have skipped the country or was he hiding in a barrel somewhere? waiting for his chance to bolt investigators deployed a zimbabwe defense forces chopper for overhead surveillance canines were also unleashed to sniff out clues all seemed futile this was until the cop turned killer became thirsty he went to a nearby homestead in in in, in Urusabe where he, he he requested for some water we good to know that uh, he was at 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 
the Tishiduku area where there was a shootout with the police officers. He then ran away. Once again, Jason was on the move. This time he dumped his vehicle in some thickets in the Chiduku area. He then disappeared in the nearby mountains. Detectives later discovered the abandoned car. Inside was the FN rifle that he had taken after his confrontation with Inspector Hove's men. Swiftly, day turned into night. There was still no sign of the triple murder suspect. Investigators remained on the trail, combing every nook and cranny. Midnight came and darkness overwhelmed the search. Day three, the search continues. Detectives became more and more inclined to believing that the fugitive was racing toward the Mozambique border. But just to be sure, several scenarios were tabled. Scenario one involved the fugitive escaping to Mozambique. Scenario two pictured Jason attempting to slip into South Africa. Scenario three involved him throwing detectives off the trail and then making a U-turn and hiding somewhere in Zimbabwe. Investigators had scenarios one and two covered with their counterparts in both countries on the case. Interpol's wide network was at hand should Jason have left Zimbabwe via any exit point. Scenario 3 was under the ambit of sustained road traffic checks. A host of near invisible detectives also covered virtually every square foot of the focus area. Plus, new technology was used to determine his exact location. It was because of this high-tech innovation that investigators could tell for certain that he bought a work suit from a shop in Mutare. We realized that uh, when he arrived in Mutare, he did some eco-cash transactions in the, we then conclusively knew that he was in Mutare and there was a high, high possibility that he was going to skip the border. Mutare Boys High School is on the fringes of Zimbabwe's eastern highlands. A few kilometers further east is Mozambique. On the afternoon of January 15, a hungry stranger visited the school. 15 January 2023. He was Immediately, the school head telephoned authorities. Investigators responded swiftly. Like crafty masons, they camped the school, examining evidence methodically. Three 9mm cartridges were discovered. And from the available descriptions, one thing became certain. 
Jason was heading for the Mozambique border. Day 4, Monday, January 16. Security agents in Mozambique were primed for action, having received a report from Zimbabwe the previous day. It, however, seemed that their man was taking too long to reach his destination. They were expecting him, and finally he showed up. His first stop was a village in Manika. He was on the move and wanted to escape, fast. Drawing his pistol, he ordered a random motorcyclist to ferry him to Chimoyo. Mozambican security details readied for imminent engagement with the fugitive. From road traffic checkpoints to inner city surveillance, it was almost certain the fish would swim to shore. And so it did. Jason got entangled with an omnibus crew over bus fare. Rapidly and unwittingly, the tussle was driving Jason towards his own capture. The ruckus exchanges finally caught the attention of law enforcement. Carefully, strategically, they approached. The wait was over. The fugitive was right before them. In one swoop, Jason was in the clutches of police, their grip unflinching. Both civilians and the men in olive green uniform wrestled him to the ground. It was the end of the road, an abrupt stop to a bloody path. Four days of demons and terror finally nipped. Apart from resembling the sight of fizzling embers, Jason appeared unmoved, emotionless, unperturbed. It was as though his nerves were singed as though a vital organ no longer existed in his abode on the left side of his upper anatomy. He was extradited to Zimbabwe a day after his capture. January 19, Jason led investigators to Wedza, retracing his steps on Friday the 13th. Villagers watched from a distance as the author of Negombwe's saddest chapter swung into sight. Their glazed eyes told a story, a story of death. Sporting a dark top and pants, the boy who they saw evolve into a man returned home. Not least as that sweet, unassuming child, but a full-grown child of darkness. Fear, anger and demons stood face to face. There appeared to be an unstated demand for an answer. An answer regarding the motive behind Crispin Kanerusine's ruthless murder. Some in the area believed Jason was angry because the apostolic leader labeled him a wealth enhancing charm user. Others say the Muvevi family and the Prophet once feuded, and the former detective was out for vengeance. Whatever the case, Jason told investigators that the gripe was over money. <laughs> From the shrine, he parked at a bus stop along with Zamurambinda Road. This is where he allegedly killed Inspector Hove and shot Detective Constable Mugova. He passed by his first murder scene and again shoot congregants away from Crispin's corpse. He then drove to Mukamba Business Center. He called Munashe to his car and shot him. His next stop was the Chiduku area of Rusape, where he was involved in a shootout with police and dumped his vehicle. He is said to have telephoned his brother-in-law, informing him that he intended to surrender. 
From Rusape, he hitched a lift to Mutare. He hid in a toilet at Asse Game Park, after which he went to Mutare Boys High School to look for food. He later crossed into Mozambique, leading to his capture and extradition to Zimbabwe. <laughs> at the CID Ballistic Center in Harare, specialists examined the murder weapon and evidence from the Wedza crime scenes. A startling detail sprang up. Specialists linked his pistol to a murder in Harare committed on November 19, 2022. The victim was one Nyarai Round, whom he allegedly shot for no apparent reason. A witness, Nyasha Yusen, was also a target but escaped death by a whisker. People may talk about the motive for the weather incident, but how then do you justify the motive for what happened in Harare on the 19th of November 2022, where Jason Mubevi callously shot dead uh, Nyara around. Yeah? In unclear, clear, clear, clear circumstances, where, you know, he went on to kidnap a witness, uh, Nyasha, whom then he was taken to Tumbiza, threatened, and he was about to be killed. And then he escaped, you see, and was arrested by the police after not cooperating when police conducted investigations for this uh, murder. And why did he hunt Chief Ruzane and Hedbin Negombe on the dark afternoon? gold. <laughs> And the inini samambo and this in the no power and McLean's. McLean's went to one of the Minister of Mines. Edmund Negombe secured gold mining claims in 2022. Inini never van could name the McLean's at dinner, but in the good agape Saka could indeed die go more and be the coop, you can on the gambo mona coop. With his mother playing a misery, Muvevi is said to have proposed partnering Hedman Negombwe. Process. Ah, that's a good plan. Because don't want machine at the Saka pandirungo funga uti pamwe ndo paka songo viri ingi kaga ndo kungo fungi zira na uti wakuma na wangu waka sotenga mishina pamwe mai wacho ndo pamwe wano gono nge waka kana waka nga wata ura na avu kuta mishina rendu mchasa inze sayenyu chichi avindaya kupunzo wakuma na wangu mimi maka mbuta ura irina na jeso nochuna wari kutavana 
Saka could I never to Pavaga Zona machinery? Even a vanguia cuya Pamivaca Funga good in the Davis tampering bloke, you good, you good machinery, even a van in Greek. January twenty. Jason was in court charged with four counts of murder and two of attempted murder. The charge sheet could get longer as the ballistic squad digs up unresolved murder cases. For now, the alleged killer of Weza is safely behind prison walls under heavy guard. Yet, a bloodstained trail follows him. The families of his alleged targets still feel an unsavory tug on their innermost bosoms. A tug that has made the unfolding reality difficult to absorb. Maxwell's widow wept relentlessly at his burial. His four children clasped hands at the funeral. The youngest, a six-year-old, unaware of what happened to daddy. Friday the 13th will remain a dark encounter throughout their lives. It will also be a roll call of innocents who were targets of a murderous spree. Crispin Karutsine, Inspector Maxwell Hove, Munashe Majan, Detective Constable Tendai Mugova, Edmund Negombwe, Chief Ruzani, Rafael Nyawema, Nyarai Round, Nyasha Yusin, and possibly many others. Thank you.